Welcome back y'all. In this video I'm going to be showing you guys how we can make a simple search and rescue program. Um, I'm extremely excited to make this video because we're going to be putting together a lot of the different skills that we've learned in the last couple videos. Um, so this, what this program is exactly going to do is it's going to have our drone fly around and look for a hiker which has been lost in the hills. right? And this guy is in need of um, medical attention and uh, needs to be found so he can be taken to a hospital. So what we're going to do is we're going to take up a drone with medical supplies and have, him auto have it autonomously search for the hiker and then land so that he can have access to the medical supplies and, the, and uh, survive until the human rescuers can get to him. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is open up Sublime. and. Once we once we open up Sublime, go ahead and go to IQGNC slash source, and then go ahead and do new file, and then save this, and call it sr.cpp, and what that stands for is search and rescue.cpp. Boom. Okay. So now, like we've been doing in the last couple tutorials, let's go ahead and add the executables so that we can build our program once we have completed coding it. So, go ahead and copy that, and then come back to Sublime and then go to the C make list and then at the bottom go ahead and just copy that right in there boom now that we set up our C make list let's go ahead and go back to the tutorial follow along and let's talk about the approach that we're going to use to code this up so the last couple tutorials I have basically cleverly designed so that we can build up to this point so one of the coding the coding videos I did was how to make the drone go to different waypoints and then the other coding exercise I did was how we can subscribe to YOLO and get that information into a CPP file and basically we're going to use that knowledge to form the basis of our search and rescue program so the first thing we're, that we're going to need to do is go ahead and copy in all the code that we developed for sub.cpp and you can do that by just easily copying this or you can copy from your sub.cpp file which you should have from the last tutorial. So let's go ahead and copy this in. Boom. Now let's do a quick review of the logic from our sub.cpp program. So Let's go. Let's start here at int main. So what we do is we go ahead and start the program and initialize ROS, get the node handle, so pretty basic stuff, and then we also declare a subscriber. And this subscriber basically gets the information from YOLO, and we basically call this, e e this function every time we spin, and basically this program just does this function ROS spin as fast as possible and calls this callback function detection CB and so every time it uh, spins it gets the last message that was published from YOLO and it goes ahead and dissects it using this for loop and what it di dissects it for is this um, information called a class and then it goes ahead and prints out um, what class YOLO is seeing so for this program what we're going to have to do is add some logic here that um, looks for um, the, uh, the person right because we want to find the person so we need to find when it is seeing the person and then execute some kind of logic to get the drone to execute the rescue functionality. Now let's do a quick review of square.cpp and see what the differences are. So like in sub.cpp, the first thing that happens is it just initializes ROS and gets the node handle. Um, but then this is where things start to diverge. So we basically use um, a bunch of the functionality from the GNC functions.hpp header file. And in this file, we have a couple different things that need to be called every time we start up the drone. So that is init publishers and subscribers and that basically gets um, access to all of the um, telemetry data that we need for navigation from our uh, flight control unit and then uh, it basically loops around until it has connection to the flight control unit and then um, it's gonna go ahead and loop around until we um, tell the tell the drone to execute the program by changing the flight mode to guided and then we'll get out of this loop and start um, navigating but before we do that we have to create a local reference frame which is basically uh, allows us to specify positions with respect to where we started the drone from so once this is initialized then we can go ahead and start the takeoff specify some waypoints and then go into our control loop 
And so I think this right here is probably the biggest difference between subs, uh, sub.cpp and square.cpp. Um, in um, sub.cpp, we basically had the ROS function ROS spin, but in this one, we have ROS spin once. And so in between each uh, spin, where we call all the um, all the subscriber uh, callback functions, we do some logic within this control loop. And then we execute all the logic and then go back, spin again, and continue getting information. So now that we've reviewed this, let's go ahead and add all of the um, initialization uh, functions that we need. So let's go ahead and just copy these four functions right into sr.cpp right here. And since since uh, we're going to also be navigating and we're going to have some logic, let's go ahead and delete ROS spin right here so that we can uh, go ahead and add in our control loop later. Now we're at the point where we have to go ahead and generate some waypoints. So I made a little nice engineering diagram so you can better understand the flight plan for the search and rescue mission. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So basically what we want the drone to do is take off and then go forward and then execute this um, basically square um, oscillating wave. And um, so in order to do that, I came up with a little um, algorithm to generate these waypoints. So you can copy this straight from the follow along and I'll go ahead and talk about what's going on here. So do that and then go ahead and go control V, boom. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tab this out so it looks a little bit more pretty. So what we're doing, so the first thing that happens here is we specify a uh, waypoint list like in square.cpp and then we um, specify the next waypoint um, that is of the object GNC API waypoint. And inside here, like in square.cpp, we have um, x, y, z, and psi, right? Um, so then I basically have this like four, uh, this for loop that goes ahead and specifies all the four different waypoints within um, the cyclic wave. Um, so you can go ahead and take a, a closer look at this, but um, we're going to use this to, to generate the waypoints. So the next thing you want to do is add right in between this line and that line, um, take off and then 10. And this will be the altitude at which where we want the drone to fly at. So Boom. Now that we got all the waypoints specified, let's go ahead and take a look um, at the control loop from square.cpp again. And basically, this logic right here sends the drone to all the different waypoints that are specified in waypoint list. And we're going to do a very similar thing, so let's go ahead and copy this square.cpp control loop right into sr.cpp and put that right below where we specified all the different waypoints. So. This is a good point to now go ahead and talk about a very key concept in robotics, and that is the operational mode that, that the robot is in. And for this program, we're going to have two different modes. We're going to have one mode for searching for the person, and then another mode for rescuing the person. So this will be a really good transition um, into adding a global variable called um, mode underscore g and we'll go ahead and add this right at the top of the page and basically just go ahead and type int and then mode underscore g and we'll set this equal to zero and what we're going to do here is use zero to denote search and then one it to denote rescue so go ahead and save that now let's go back to the control loop so in the control loop we'll have this functionality, search, which is basically sending the drone to all the different waypoints within the search pattern, and then we'll have another, then we'll have to specify uh, some other logic for the rescue. So let's go ahead and, and write if, and then basically put the, the parentheses, and then do mode underscore g is equal to equal to zero. Go ahead and have the drone fly to all the different waypoints. So boom, and then close uh, curly bracket, and let's go ahead and tab this out so it looks prettier. Yeah. And then the next thing is we're going to add another if statement right here that basically checks mode 
underscore g is equal equal to one. And when this happens, we want to go ahead and make the drone land. So we'll write we'll use the function land just as we used in um, square.cpp. And what this is simulating is is basically that the drone is going to go ahead and land so that it can drop off some rescue supplies, maybe like first aid, water, food, or what whatnot, until the human rescuers can get there. And so once we go ahead and execute land, um, we probably also want to write to the human operator what is going on here. So we'll put Ross underscore info and then we'll just write um, rescue operations started. Boom. Now this is the end of the program. So we want to just go ahead and hit uh, and write break and then that'll go ahead and just end the program right there. We have finished the rescue operation so we're done. So we have this variable called mode underscore g and we're checking within our control loop for what mode we're in but now we need a way to change what mode we're in and that is going to come from um, what we are seeing and so we need to add an if statement within the detection cb uh, callback that is checking for uh, when the drone is seeing uh, a person which is our hiker so let's go ahead and write if and then um, the parentheses and we'll go ahead and um, basically kind of copy this logic right here um, so control C and control V so basically we're taking the message um, dereferencing it for the bounding box um, of I and dot class and then we'll check if this is equal equal to um, the C++ string person boom and then if it's equal to the person we want to change the flight mode that we're in and so we'll just go ahead and set mode underscore g equal to one and when this happens then um, we'll the next time we go through this control loop uh, it will detect that we're in mode one and execute the land and then end the program um, uh, yeah so now we've done that we're probably ready to build so let's go ahead and get that started all right so i just reviewed what we wrote and i found two little errors first is that our node handle is uh incorrect right here so in this program we're calling our node handle n so we'll pass n right into init a publisher's subscribers so go ahead save that and then come up here and we also forgot to include the include file for all of the GNC functions. So go ahead and write um, hashtag include and then um, GNC underscore functions dot HPP. And we'll go ahead and save that and then go ahead, open up a terminal, CD to catkin workspace and then write catkin build. Looks like it worked, boom. Alright, so now we're going to launch the simulation as we've been doing in the last couple of tutorials. So let's go ahead and write ROS launch and then IQ underscore, underscore sim and then hills dot launch. Boom. And then in, the, uh, in another terminal, go ahead and cd back to the home directory and then go dot slash start and then software in the loop dot sh. Boom. And we'll go ahead and wait for that to boot up. So now that the simulation is up and running, there's a couple other things that we need to run before we can run our program. So go ahead and start another terminal, and then uh, we need to initiate the map, uh, map link uh, communication. So go ahead and run ROS launch, and then IQ underscore um, sim, and then APM dot launch. Boom. So now let's make another terminal and run YOLO. And so we'll do that by writing ROS launch darknet and then darknet ross dot launch boom and then finally we're going to go ahead and run our program which is going to be uh, run by typing ross run and then iq underscore gnc and then sr and then go ahead and run that so now let's take a look at what our drone is going to be doing so let's go ahead zoom out 
and take a look. So basically, this is the guy that is lost, and we need to find him. But just to uh, do a better test, let's move him back a little bit um, so that uh, it's more so that our drone like flies a little bit. So let's go ahead and take the translation tool, click on our guy, and then move him back uh, just a wee bit, and then add him right over there. All right, so I think that'll be a fine for now, and let's go ahead and run this program. So and now it's waiting for us to set the mode to guide it, so let's go over to the map proxy terminal and write mode guide it. All right, perfect. The mode, the drone is taken off and we can look at YOLO and see what it's detecting. So it's detecting the truck and if we look at the outputs from R it's just detecting the stuff and the drone is about to fly forward and uh, begin the search pattern. So it found the person and now it is landing so that it can deliver the critical equipment. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I know this was one of my favorite tutorials to record. It basically took all of this nerdy ass stuff that we've been learning over the last few tutorials and put it into something that's actually useful and has the potential to save somebody's life. So until the next one, peace out.